Babalu got his tongue bitten by Pippa. And I'm going to talk in this video about how I dealt with that. It happened on a Saturday night when you can't get to the vet, right? That's the way things usually work. They happen on at times when you really can't do much. Uh, we also have a long travel time to any vet. Um, so, of course, I had to inspect the wound. <laughs> Science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. <laughs> the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a non-profit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. So I first rinsed his beak out with warm water. Warm water because if you put cold water in their beak, they're just about as happy as if we put cold water in our mouths, right? Really cold, ice cold water. They don't seem to like that too much. But uh, there was a lot of blood, and there generally is in head wounds and in wounds to the tongue. It, what I was able to determine is he lost a little bit of the skin around the base of the tongue. Now the culprit is this one right here who swallowed lead and had to have it surgically removed before she came here. She has issues, uh, obviously, since lead poisoning causes permanent brain damage and you can't get the lead out of the system. Despite what people say about chelation, there's no way to get lead out. So Bob actually is quite attracted to this little girl and she's a sweet little girl to me, aren't you baby? Aren't you? Yeah, she's sweet to me. She has been since she first came here. But this guy was, he was just elated to see her. Someone of his own species. She's a triton, he's a triton. So, of course, he tried to approach her, and she doesn't really allow that. And he's such a high-energy guy, he, I don't know, he's kind of like an athlete. A lot of athletes are you know, busy, busy, busy moving around, but they're not doing a lot of thinking. I'm not saying all of them are that way. I was a fat kid in school, so what do you want me to say? So, of course, I had to keep them separate for a while. That was an absolute necessity. I basically separated them for a whole week. And, uh, hello, Cecil. Hello. Hi, sugar. You gonna try to get him to bring you? Yeah, he probably will. So I had to keep them separated for a little while, and that wasn't really much of a problem. It's just that it takes a lot of extra time. Instead of going out to the aviary for two hours, you're or two and a half hours, you're going out to the aviary for four or five. And the heat wasn't helping with that either. But eventually I was able to move them back together and then keeping track constantly of their, of their uh, interactions together. I don't let them get too close together. And it took about a week for his, his tongue to heal. Now the first thing I did with his tongue, once I was able to clearly see what happened to it and take pictures of it, I then took a little bit of baking soda and salt and warmed it up, you know, in water and did a, a, a lavage of his, of his beak with the uh, salt water solution, the saline solution. Obviously, you can't actually put any uh, stipic or anything like that in their mouth, I mean, in their beak. If you put it into their beak, uh, you take a gag to death, so you don't want to do that. Um, you do the same thing you do for humans, salt water. But you want to have, if possible, you want to have their, their beak twisted to the side so the water pours through and they don't swallow it. You don't want them getting salt in their system because too much salt is terribly bad for these guys. So you don't want that. 
Then, of course, you're dealing with the emotional issues when one can't come out and the others are outside. Bob was doing a lot of screaming while she was out here and he couldn't come out and vice versa. And uh, a lot of negative behaviors. Uh, the little girl got upset with me quite a bit, but she didn't bite me or anything. I mean, it's not like they do that, but it's just that she looked at me with those sad eyes. Like, why am I not able to go outside? And Bob looked at me with those sad screams because he's really good at screaming. He can scream for hours on end if he's not getting what he wants. But he's a good boy, that Bob. And after his tongue healed, I started moving them out to the aviary with Pippa coming out last. He can't have that, so I separated them. And what I'll do is I'll put my hand right in front of her beak like this. That's my method of dealing with kind of redirecting her so she doesn't look at Bob. And then I've got to do the same thing with Bob. Get him down to play with playing with the toy. Get him back to playing with his toy. Just keep them separated. A lot of people will... They will decide to keep their birds separate forever after a situation like this. What did you say, Salamander? They will decide to keep their birds separate and uh, be afraid to ever put them together again. Well, they've got to live, they've got to have a life, and that means you have to work through it. And that's why I think everybody should take uh, Animal Training 101 with Dr. Zellix online. Um, and then you should also read the Manual of Parrot Behavior so you kind of know what you're dealing with. And most people will say that, oh, I can figure it out on my own, but uh, if I put a polar bear or a lion or a tiger in your home, we'll see how well that works, right? Now, whereas you may be able to put a bird in a back room and shut the door and turn the light off, which some people do. Um, I'm not saying you do that, but, you know, people do it because they just can't figure it out and they're not willing to, to learn. So uh, learn before you have to deal with these things. No first aid, too. Um, the best DVD on first aid is simply a first aid DVD from um, the Birdie Boutique. And uh, the doctor does a great job of telling you how to deal with first aid. And first aid is that. It's exactly that. It is first aid. It's not meant to be... It's not meant to be the final solution. You go to the vet. Now, I didn't take Bob to the vet, and the reason is pretty simple. It was a Saturday night. The closest vet was about three hours away, and if he was going to bleed to death, he was going to do that before I got him to the vet. So I stopped the bleeding with the saline solution, giving it to him several times until the bleeding stopped. I kept an eye on him the entire time. Didn't I, Bob? Bob, did I keep watch, watch this as I work with him? See how he is? <laughs> You're so silly, Bob. He's like, I'm playing with a toy. Why are you bothering me? I just kept a uh, good observation on him and then observed him every day, made sure that he didn't get involved with Pippa. We kept them apart, slowly integrated them back in, and I keep a close eye on them. So I hope these little tips help you and give you a little insight into how we work. Thank you very much, and please remember to support us on Patreon. Good morning,